Good morning and welcome once again. Um, thank you so much for coming out to the Grassroots Speaker Series this morning. Um, TSME is really excited to bring you, this is the third event, <laughs> some background music. <laughs> this is the third event in our Grassroots Speaker Series, so we're really excited um, to keep this series going. Um, this was a, an event that was, or a series that was created by TSME staff sort of in response to um, just wanting to kind of put to the forefront um, key social justice issues and kind of um, bring together a lot of grassroots organizers and leaders in the area and all the wonderful work that's being done um, despite the added challenges um, that are being faced with from funding, visibility reasons, and otherwise um, just because of the current political, political climate. Um, the series is really meant to highlight the creativity, the resilience of local um, community organizers and make space for TSME staff members and also other community members to come together um, and actively, actively listen and engage with each other, um, putting the, the work of the grassroots organizations and leaders at the forefront of those conversations. Um, that brings me to our special guest this morning, um, Gloria Namugaya of the um, Women Encouraging Empowerment, WEE for short. She's here with a special guest, uh, this is a recent mother, so congratulations to Gloria, we're really excited Thank that you. you'll see her with her special guest today. Um, <laughs> she <laughs> is the Executive Director of Women Encouraging Empowerment, a local grassroots organization with the mission to educate, advocate, protect, and advance the rights of immigrants, refugees, and low-income women, women and their families. Their work is predominantly done through organizing, leadership development, and the delivery of a variety of services. She's gonna share with us this morning a lot of uh, stories, some of the programming that they do, and then also um, some of the key challenges of the work that, that she's doing as well. So um, that's it for me. I'm gonna hand it over to Gloria. Thank you again, and um, we look forward to a really exciting conversation this morning. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, Gloria Namugaya, I'm a new mother. I have a seven-month-old, and she's with me right now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are going to do the presentation together today. So she's going to be well-behaved, um, I <laughs> promise you. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm so happy to be here, and um, I was looking forward to this day. And um, when I told um, some of our members and ladies about today, um, they were so happy and they were like, you know, we want to come with you tomorrow to, um, to the event. So you'll see some of the pretty faces of some of the women members in the room. And um, so um, I hope um, this, um, this presentation goes well with this little one here. So I'm um, the executive director at Women Encouraging Empowerment, and um, I work with um, immigrants and refugee women that are newcomers to the US. Some of them are long-term um, residents in the US, but um, we work with, um, our focus is mainly um, advancing and empowering um, immigrant and refugee women. So. Those are some of um, the lovely faces of um, our group of ladies. And um, so before I start, um, I want to let you know about some arguments in the room today. Um, one is, you know, we should, you know, recognize the varying experiences and the diversity in the room. So you'll, he you'll be hearing some whispers. So there's some translation going to be going on. So, and hope you everyone, you know, can recognize that and respect, you know, um, everyone who's in the room. Um, the other one is cell phones on stand. And one conversation at a time, no sidebars. And the last one is the Vegas roll. Um, like I told you, I came with some of our members and they'll be happy to share some of their experiences and um, we are hoping that this is a safe space for um, some of our members to share the experiences and you know what is said in the room stays in the room. So, um, so 
So we are going to have a warm up before we start. And it's called WWA went, who attended. So you're going to um, face someone that you know you don't know, a new face for today. And um, you'll be sharing with your partner where you went. Last week was a spring, was spring break. So <laughs> for some of you, you, sh you know, you would have some things that you have done. So for when, so you're going to share where you went for the last, for the last week. Who did you meet? And, and when you met that person, what are some of the things that you learned from that person that you met? And attended, what, what, did, what is something that you attended in the last two weeks that was out of your professional or family life, something exciting? Yeah, so let's go. Five minutes for this. <laughs> A new face. So, um, you guys are going to spread. We have some new faces here on this table. Someone missing a partner? Someone missing a partner? Oh. Three? Okay. We have. Can someone join this table? All right, time is up. <laughs> time 
is up. You're going to have a different. <laughs> so um, I, I'm going to have three. I'm going to have three people share their partners. Um, WWA. <laughs> and um, let me see. We have. Who, who would love to volunteer? Who would love to volunteer to share their partners? W A A. All right. <laughs> Thank Hi, I'm Nassim, and this is one of my first times being to this event, and I got the honor of getting to know Bedria and her sister-in-law, Mona, who are originally from Eritrea. And last week, they both went to the New England Aquarium, and they got to see all the fishes, the beautiful fishes, and spend time with her son. And uh, the, does Mona? Yeah, so, and the, the family, and it was really nice, and just to see the beautiful fishes and get out and enjoy the beautiful weather. And then I just told them, I had the honor of going to Harvard University's Radcliffe. Um, they had an event last Thursday where they did a tribute to Joan Jordan. Um, uh, yeah, Joan Jordan, who's a poet. And uh, it was a really great tribute. And the great um, thing about it is they usually have a reception, but they had all the Southern food. So was, I, I felt like I was at, in the South for Christmas time or Thanksgiving, you know, with a meal of ribs and macaroni and cheese and potato salad and everything. So it was kind of nice to enjoy, and especially on a cold Thursday, you know, because the yeah. weather changed last Thursday, so. But that, that, that's all I have to share, so th thank you. Thank you. Um, one more. <laughs> Was it that boring? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Lena Canyon, and this is Sharon. Yeah, and she went to the Isabella Gardner Museum for break, oh, and it was yeah. great. She loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for participating in this, and um, let's all. <laughs> Um, I guess it was the next warm up. So, um, like um, Nicole mentioned to you, um, coming from women encouraging empowerment, and um, it's a non profit that works with um, immigrant and refugee women. And um, this organization was founded in 2010 to meet the needs of immigrant and refugee women and their families. And um, our, the nonprofit serves um, neighboring cities in Revere. We serve um, the Revere community, Chelsea, East Boston, uh, Malden, and um, we don't close our doors. Everyone is welcome. So despite, despite um, us mentioning, you know, the cities and that are neighboring, but even if someone came from Framingham, they're all welcome. We never close doors to refugees and immigrants and their families and anyone who wants to access our services. Um, so some of the services that um, we offer um, ESL program, and this is the English, English um, for second English ESL. <laughs> English as a second language. So, um, so many um, immigrants and refugees come into the U.S. Um, and this, they come and sometimes this is their first new home and they don't have the English language skills. So um, they come to me and um, they learn the basics of English and um, so that they can communicate better so that they can, they can be able to get jobs so that they can help their kids with homework so that you know, they can assimilate into the system. And also we have um, 
a domestic violence prevention program where we work with um, women who are survivors and also are in situations of domestic violence. And also we have a children's program. Um, it's mostly students, and these are high school students. And um, these are students who are in the newcomer academy. Like when they come into the US, they are placed before they are put into the mainstream. Um, there is a newcomer academy in Riviera, so we work with um, some of those students. Um, we also have a leadership development for um, the women that come in our program. And this is a very amazing program because um, as an immigrant myself coming, coming into the US and my voice being suppressed from a very young age and coming to an environment where um, given skills where I can express myself and be able to stand before people and you know and you know be a leader in the community um, very you know I'm very um, honored to be in such a space and um, this is what these are some of the skills and um, experiences that we want to pass on to newcomers and immigrants and women that come to our center. So our mission um, is to educate, advocate, protect, and advance the rights of immigrants, refugees, and low-income women, plus their families. And that's our mission. So another thing is, so we is global. So we stands for women encouraging empowerment. We are global and we have all, we, peop, our clients and our members come from all parts of the world. I, I'll promise you that. And right now, um, so some of the, our countries of origin, um, we have people, women from Morocco, Ecuador, Guatemala, El Salvador, Algeria, Brazil, Ivory Coast, Iraq, Cambodia, Mexico, Gambia, and so on. Sudan, Eritrea, <laughs> and Uganda. So we are a global, global community in our in the small city in Riviera. And um, our pri the primary languages that um, we have are mostly Arabic, Creole, Spanish, Portuguese, Hindi, and um, Swahili. I speak Swahili, so if you need any services, um, translation and interpretation of Swahili, just give me a call. And, <laughs> and um, so, what are some? So I'm. Um, going to share some of the stories of our women and amazing members. So this is Chin. Chin is not able to be with us today. She, um, she's on a three-month fellowship in California. But Chin came here um, as a professional to the Harvard, to Harvard as a Fulbright um, visiting scholar. She's a PhD, and um, she's got amazing skills. But when she got to the US and walked into, onto the Harvard campus, she could not communicate well because she lacked the English skills. She had all her education in Chinese. So where did she go? She had to look around for a community where she, where she would feel comfortable and um, learn English and also share experience. So this is Chin and she has a lot of work that has been published in Chinese journals and she's hoping that after um, getting the English skills from Wei, she can be able to get her work from Ch Chinese and translate it into English so that she can share it with um, the people in the US. 
And so that's chin. And Vinta is from Senegal. And she came here as um, a refugee. And actually, th these words are in court. So this is, I had to talk to them to get their stories. <laughs> so feel free to um, read. So she's also one of um, our ESL uh, members. And according in her words, I was once a newcomer and I'm an immigrant. I know the feeling. I was empowered and got a lot of resources at work. I'm very happy to give back to a community that is often forgotten that it exists. We support each other despite the isolation and discrimination that exists. We is like a second home. It's a family to us. I enjoy coming to the center and helping others. I enjoy organizing and translating and being part of a diverse community. So Binta is also one of um, our, our members that helps with um, translation in French in the school district and also at WE. So, and this is Siham. Um, she's another amazing member. She's from Libya. She also came here as a result of um, the instability back home, and she was able to come to we um, after being here for um, after being here for about two, three three months. So she wanted to enroll her daughter in school. She wanted to have health insurance. She wanted to speak the language, but no one was helping her. She had an experience of going into the hospital and you know everyone was telling her to go online. She didn't have any computer skills. So those are some of the barriers that um, immigrant and um, refugee members in our community face. And um, we are able to help them navigate the US system and um, the different resources that they need. And um, right now we also have um, an amazing lady. She's called Siham. She can also share her story for two minutes. And she's in the room right now. <laughs> yeah. So Siham is one of our members. And when she got to the US, she also came, you know, she came to we and right, she can share more about herself. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, my name is Siham. Uh, I'm originally from Bolivia. I came last 2015, last October, and uh, uh, I was born here in Wyoming, uh, but I, w uh, I left the country when I was two years old. Uh, I back to Libya with my family, but when I'm trying to back here, like we're doing lots of stuff, uh, my dad passed away and my mother didn't bring us here. That's why I stayed in Libya. But after that, I decided to back here last 2015 with my husband and two kids. Um, I have uh, a daughter, eight years old, and I have a son, six years old. Um, I came here uh, when I decided to come here because of the, the situations in my country. It was um, horrible a little bit. Before because of the revolutions, um, uh, because you know it's um, it's horrible in there. It's not safe, uh, chaos, um, and I want my better future for my kids. That's why I decided to come here. Uh, when I came here, like I faced um, some issues, like I don't know where I go, where I get the. Uh, hospital things, staff, schools, um, and for something else, when I came here, I didn't have a social security number, 
And when I went to, the, to apply for that, they said, why you don't have social security number? You are a citizen, but why you, have the, you don't have that security, so social security number? I told them, I don't know, <laughs> because I was a baby, I don't know. And I stayed for just two, three months to get that one, like gone far, gone far. They asked me for bring um, like uh, improvement, medical improvement, school improvement. And I tried to do that because I can't go back to Libya and bring this stuff and back here. But, um, it's, it's, a, it's a long story. <laughs> And um, I decided to like enjoying we because uh, my cousins we have, um, and they helped me a lot for like doing the medical stuff and schools and prepare my what I go, what I do. Like I'm like in chaos because I don't know what is the rules here. It's a new for me. And I stayed with them. They helped me a lot. And after that, they uh, asked me to give like English classes to the in we, especially in level one, the Arabic speakers, because most of them from Morocco. And I started to give that classes to them and translate, helping each other, like well, like that. What I say, um, one for all and all for one. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you, thank you, Siham. So um, Siham has shared her amazing story, and so Siham is one of the members that came to we, and um, we were able to work with her as a family to, um, to navigate the U.S. system, and she needed a job. And where else would she be, you know, empowered? Siham is an experienced teacher. She has um, all the credentials to qualify um, to teach in a college in the US, but that's not possible at the moment because she has to go through so much. And um, you know, we, you know, as, as an organization, we looked at her experience, her background and her education. She was qualified for a teaching position. And right now she's an ESL instructor at WE. So that's what we do. We empower women. We empower our community. And um, these are more stories. And this is Julia. Julia is from Peru. And she's also one of our members. So like I told you, um, we is a very, very diverse community. Um, we have people coming from all sorts of the world, all countries, and they come, you know, to the U.S. with um, um, English as their second language, and they they are coming from a place where um, institutions are not that structured, like in the U.S. and you know, tall buildings and you know, neat roads. <laughs> Everything is new. So, you know, you get that culture shock as a newcomer and um, so, um, like I said, we have English as a second language for adults. Um, we, we don't only provide it to women, but we also provide it, you know, to um, families, to men. And so we have a few men that, you know, approach um, our programs and you know sign up and enroll for the um, for the classes. Um, we also have a domestic violence prevention program where we work closely with um, um, some of the women who um, have issues of domestic violence and also who are survivors. And um, the way we approach it is um, through um, support services in different languages, um, assistance with, devo with developing safety plans. Um, we give them um, handouts, and also we have an information desk where all information is, you know, um, is um, just, and also, um, also help understanding and navigating the legal system 
um, the US legal system is a very complicated um, system to navigate. I, I'm a lawyer by profession, and trust me, um, when you're in law school, they always tell you a good lawyer knows where to find the law, but the US legal system, I'm telling you, it's, it's um, something that um, if someone does not speak the language, it's very hard and very challenging to understand the concepts that, um, that, that are put forward. And also we have support groups for um, the women. Um, we have a women's community circle, and this happens every week. And um, the women come together and um, share problems, they share issues. Um, we have potlucks, and we also have henna parties um, every month. And um, this is a time for everyone to share their stories, their experiences, if they need support, and if someone needs um, anything and needs to understand anything, so it's something that we, um, it's a space, it's a safe space that um, women come and feel comfortable and welcome to every time they come to we. And we have also, you know, we work with community, um, different community partners like Habokov, um, some women, need, if some women need to go to a shelter, they will be um, um, assigned to a shelter through um, our partners. And you know, we have different activities on educating the community and women about um, domestic violence. And this is something that the women did um, about um, hands are not for hitting. And this was a very educative session and something that um, they shared with um, everyone in the community. So like I said, um, in, our, in, our, in our we community circle, um, women, everyone who comes here, you know, with you know, different challenges and different barriers, and so um, the, main, um, the, the main barrier is um, English and the lack of job-related skills. So many of our members don't really get jobs because they lack the skills and experience of working in a U.S. setting. So we help them um, have, we help them have that kind of you know, experience and also have trainings and workshops. And also the unfamiliarity with the U.S. cultural practices and system. Um, that's something that we emphasize in the women's circle. We talk about the U.S. culture. We talk about the systems and how to navigate different systems. Um, excuse me. Um, we talk about um, the different, how to navigate the different systems, how to enroll your child in school how to get myself, how to um, access some um, different, any kind of support. And it's, you know, it's um, since, uh, for our um, immigrants, um, our organization um, is mostly um, a member base. We get, with our women's circle, it's led by the women themselves. And um, we have volunteers who translate, who help to translate um, during the sessions. And, you know, we just, it's a place where um, we want everyone to feel comfortable and confident in their skin, in, you know, despite their accents, despite, you know, it's everyone is welcome to the women's circle. So, um, with also with the we community, um, we we are able to um, provide you know different um, services that different services that um, that are barriers for immigrant and refugees to access services. Um, why not come with an English? Why not come for an English class when you have a child because you don't have child care? No, so come with your child and you'll have you know the English. Um, lesson. We also provide transportation 
um, we provide food, and also we provide home visits and wellness checks. Like I said, it's a family, it's a community. So if I don't see Ofa today, uh, we'll have you not call and say, oh, where is Ofa? Does she, is she sick? Does she need something? Does she need soup? Does she need, you know, it's, you know, it's just a family, um, a warm family in Revere and And um, yeah, so some of um, our goals is to help the women, you know, to change their attitudes. You know, everyone who comes here as a newcomer in, um, an, in an immigrant or refugee capacity, there is that sense of hopelessness. So helping them feel confident that, you know, um, things are going to change is um, something that is one of our core core values, and um, we, have, we empower them to get to know their um, legislators. And every year we have a very good friend, um, the Speaker of the House, um, Speaker Dilio. So um, in most cases we go visit, <laughs> then he comes visit also our, our side. So this was a picture at um, the speakers in the Speaker's house in the speaker's office. <laughs> and um, so the other part of um, that I want to talk about is um, the nature of working in our challenging climate at the moment. Sorry, my visa is misbehaving. <laughs> so, um, what are some of the, cha the nature of working in um, this challenging um, environment? Um, as I said, like we are working, we are in a very difficult um, state at the moment. A lot of um, hopelessness, a lot, a lot of disappointment um, in our members. So um, there is visibility of ICE and FBI in our community. And, um, you know, parents share stories about being ordered by the police to show identification while dropping off their kids, which is absurd. And also, you know, ice pounding on doors. And, and also, you know, city councillors attacking our members and our board members. So it's, it's, um, it's a very challenging So it's a very challenging, challenging um, work climate. And um, one of our members can share. Um, like I said, um, we are sticking by the Vegas rule. What is said in this room stays in this room. And um, one of our members, Siham, can share with us um, the experience, you know, of you know, being a member in the Riviera community and despite her being a citizen, but then the fact that she's Libyan and she's wearing a scarf, um, it won't, the mic will go to see her now. dealer he's traveling around the world and he asked me he want to go to visit me he come here to visit me with his wife and uh, I told him it's okay and he went to Tunisia to American Embassy to get the visa and when he came here when he arrived in the airport uh, someone called me and he like asked me a questions about my cousin and why he want to come here and visit me. I asked him, it's okay, because he wanted just a visit. He asked me, he was gonna stay here. I told him not. He is not gonna stay here because he's a dealer and he has uh, like many stores and many things to do between China, India, uh, Turkish, Italy. They said, okay, they took, I think, two hours inside there till they got out. And after that, like a couple of weeks, uh, someone called me from the FBI and he wants to meet me 
he uh, like asked me, can I go to your house or if you want to meet outside or something like that. But in the end, they came in my house too, a man and a, wo uh, man and a woman, and they like take conversation with me. They asked me a lot of questions about Libya, like uh, who's the leader, where is the, uh, like, um, what are their relations do, um, a, a, a lot of things. But I told them, I don't know, because I have just the news from the news or from the chatting on my family or something like that. Uh, they asked me if I have names, you have to give us the names. I told them I don't know names, but I know just uh, the specific names, like the famous one who did their relations and where the guns go, where they hiding or something like that, but I don't know. <laughs> and after that, they took just two hours talking about this stuff, uh, asking uh, questions, get answers. They, they were friendly, not that aggressive, but they were scared. And after that, they asked me to come back for more questions. I told them, okay, but I don't have anything else to add. And they asked me, we want to meet your husband too. I told them, w he will gonna say the same. We, like, we don't have something in you to add. This is the general. Uh, they called me after that visit about three days or a week, a week, uh, and they asked me to come. But that time uh, I was in, uh, I was sick. I had a miscarriage, um, but I told them I'm, I'm sick. But they asked me they want to come to meet my husband. I told them my husband walk and he had nothing to add. They said Did you don't want us to come. I told them I, had, I have nothing to add. And that's it. After that, they call me again, and they give me that business card if I have something or something to add or if I remembered something or that. But I told them I don't have nothing to add. This is the end of that conversation. I don't have nothing to add. Um, th and the first time, um, like, um, I thought they will ask me about my cousin why he came here to um, visit or stuff like that. But they didn't ask me anything. They asked me just about the revelations of the war, the guns, the weather relations, hiding, who's the leader, and stuff like that. And that's it. Um, Saham's experience, like I said, um, I'm working in um, an immigrant and refugee community, and sometimes um, we just can't tell stories without them about, so we have that role, there is that role of, you know, about them, um, not about them, like when you want to tell um, someone's, um, I wanted to um, share her story um, as, as regards um, the nature of um, um, the challenging climate that you're working in, um, FBI and um, ICE being, you know, present in our community and interrogating, you know, our clients. And um, so we've been having know your rights um, workshops um, to educate our members and um, the community about, um, if, you know, if you get visitations um, from, you know, from FBI or from ICE, um, what you need to do. But then despite all these workshops, um, because um, someone is in a state of fear, they in most cases end up, you know, opening the door and, you know, they'll come in, be friendly, they'll be noting down stuff as they ask you, they'll be nice as always. But um, that's something, you know, that um, we are trying our best, you know, to educate um, our community and members that um, um, this is a very hard time and it's very challenging. And as a resident in the U.S., as someone present in the U.S., you're not illegal. You should just have, you know, know your rights. And um, that's, we hopefully we'll get there. It's still, you know, we are still fighting. So... 
Yeah, so t together, we, you know, we are all in this. And, you know, together as one, we can, you know, we can make a difference. And um, so that, you know, one day we wake up and it's, you know, the climate is not as intense as it is right now, whereby I'm not waking up thinking, oh, this the FBI might come in tomorrow or next week. So, um, so like I said, I came with some of our members in the room, and um, I would just like to acknowledge their presence, and um, they'll just there, there will just be um, a short introduction of them. So. Introductions. <laughs> I'm from, originally from Libya, and uh, I came here last 2015. And uh, I'm a member, of we are uh, giving classes, English classes to uh, Arabic speakers, and I'm from Vincent too. My name is Anir. I am from, from Nigeria. <laughs> I have seven children, a grandma. <laughs> Uh, come here, Yoni. Twenty, twenty, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Sumia. I'm uh, new in US, just uh, five months, and uh, I mother. This is my only child. <laughs> uh, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I am, uh, my name is Badria. I'm here, uh, I'm here about, yeah. <laughs> I'm six years, about six years. I have a baby boy, <laughs> I'm very young. You can speak Arabic. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Mona. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm six months in Arabic. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Can I Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, her name is Mona. She's from Sudan. She came here just four months ago and um, she got married from her husband. Sudan, yeah. And her husband working at the children's hospital. And uh, she, she said she's a new in here. That's it. She's not that speaking English. She's trying. We'll get our kit together. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, for listening to me and you know for having all your attention and for accommodating um, the diversity in the room and um, I'll hand over to Nicole.
Yeah, um, yeah, I'll take some questions. All right, I'm just looking at the time. It's about 12.05, so I do want to thank first and foremost Gloria and everyone from WE who's here with us today. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we do, um, we're happy to stay a little bit longer if you have the time. Um, I'd be happy to um, open up the floor to questions. Um, so we do have a microphone just because we are recording, so we ask that if you have a question, raise your hand. Um, we'll come around with a microphone, and then also um, if there's any from online too, we could check that too. So any questions? I have a question, <laughs> if that's no. okay. Um, uh, oh, you say one more. Yeah, yeah. Question? Yeah, Gina. Hi, my Hi. name is Trina, and welcome, and thank you very much for the presentation, Gloria, and to meet the members of WE. Uh, my question is if the members, the women, can talk about what has been some of the challenges of being here, and how have you learned to cope with a new culture, uh, this, this different sort of place where you're like raising your families. How are you dealing with just the, the change and what it means to feel at home here? Thank you. Uh, hi again, uh, my name is Sumia. I'm from Morocco. I'm new in US, uh, just five months. Uh, being in US, it's uh, very difficult uh, uh, for me uh, because I'm a new mother and uh, I don't have uh, any family here. I'm, uh, I feel uh, alone. Uh, uh, no, uh, I don't know nobody. My English is uh, not, uh, it's, uh, not uh, good. Uh, that's why I uh, I came to uh, to Gloria to learn in English with Siham and uh, uh, to help myself uh, to uh, learn in English, learn uh, uh, the community American and uh, the law American. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> and uh, why not uh, find a uh, job and. Uh, uh searching a new life here in the US and uh, it's uh, it's very different it's uh, not like home not like uh, your uh, your your country it's a different country and thanks <laughs> thank you um uh, the challenge i faced here when i came here the for uh, about the the first year when being here it's like um, I'm not walking, my husband not walking, and just spending money because we ha we brought saving money, just spending saving money, saving money, and uh, I tried to apply but I couldn't. But Gloria asked me to give a classes in the uh, we, and for my husband he tried to but he couldn't for a, a whole year, just a spending a saving money, hourly saving money. And uh, the second thing, because I don't have I don't have any informations about the rule here, like where I have to go to register my kids in school. Uh, they ask me a lot, lots of papers um, um, for the hospitals to. If you don't have insurance, you will gonna die. <laughs> it's happened to my son when I came the first time. My son like um, fall down and his like um, he hurt his her his uh, his head he had a little cut and i went to the emergency and they asked me for insurance i don't i don't have uh they took care of uh, care of my kids just cut the hair clean up and put the glue after two weeks they sent me a bill about 750. <laughs> i don't know i'm going what 
Um, that's why it's like a new stuff. I face it. I cried a lot. I was like feel lonely because um, I don't know. I don't know anything about here. But the Moroccan women, they help a lot. We help me a lot. I asked. I went. And for that time, I was uh, pregnant, but I don't know. And I had a miscarriage too because I'm running between the trains, buses, here, there, schools, hospitals. It's a tough time. <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't want to remember that. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a lot. Hi, my name is Patrick. Thanks, Gloria, for your great presentation and the work you do. I had a question uh, about, you said you had a domestic violence program, and another thing that you mentioned was sometimes the difficulty that you have with the police approaching you. So how does your organization try to balance out supporting women when they are suffering or you know surviving through domestic violence and you know, working with the community and the police to try to protect these women. Um, hello. Yeah, so um, thank you um, so much. Um, I actually went to school with him, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so in these challenging times, you know, it's pretty tough for everyone and also pretty tough for me to, you know, confidently walk in when someone asks me, oh, I heard you are losing our insurance. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> who said that? Well, it's, you know, it was all over the news. So um, it's been pretty tough, and the, well, what we do is um, bring in, you know, people to um, talk to um, the ladies, um, have information sessions, and um, also, um, like I said, we have community circles, and this is a healing time, and this is, you know, a space, safe space where everyone shares their feelings. Um, we share stories, we support each other, and it's just amazing to see tremendous support from, you know, from everyone um, in the room during. We have these um, on a weekly basis, so um, the women meet weekly and. Um, you know, it's one way of, you know, having community, a community to support you. Um, we have potlucks, we have um, also volunteer lawyers that come in and um, they've helped with um, some of our members, you know, in domestic violence cases and also we work with um, Haboko um, to help, you know, if anyone needs shelter. And also we get some um, generous um, donations like toiletries to give, you know, to people who lack and you know, food, jackets, um, shoes, yeah. Thank you. One more question up there? Is there one more question? No? All right, great. Well, um, thank you, thank you, thank you again for being here. Um, as one final note, um, food has arrived, so we have um, lunch here provided by the um, Blue Nile Ethiopian restaurant from um, Jamaica Plains. So that's a local black owned business that we're happy to support as part of our grassroots speaker series. So please feel free to grab lunch before you go. Um, we are going to follow up with an email, um, just kind of loop back to everyone in terms of like next steps, potentially some action steps that we can take away from today as well. So look out for that email communication. Um, and then lastly, just thank you so much Gloria for being here with us today. Um, we are so happy to have you as part of our network. Thank you for having yeah. me. Thank you. One final round. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is it um, taking a picture?